What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. Today, let's talk about the spiny cup coral of the genus Pectinia. Pectinia are a large polyp stony coral from the family Marilinidae. It shares this family with a great many other stony corals, but in particular, chalices of the genera Echinopora and Mycidium. I bring up their similarity to chalices because pectinia have a plate-like growth form, but then they send up these spiky spires from that plate. It's a very interesting growth form that separates it from those other large polyp stonies. Unlike chalice corals that have a wide range of color morphs, there are relatively few in pectinia land. Every now and again, I see a new color morph pop up, but typically, they are a variant of some basic strains. The most popular strain is probably the Space Invader color morph, which is a neon green color with yellow eyes. They're also the fastest growing variety I've seen here, and they're easily propagated. The next most popular is the quote-unquote rainbow color morph, which has a mix of purple and green at the edges of the plate, as well as the spires and with a red or pink coloration towards the center of the plate in those valleys. Now there are several offshoot variants of this pattern, which you might find like a reddish pink center to be more orange in color, or the green on the body shifts towards a yellow green rather than a forest green. These color variants of the rainbow pectinia might be just a result of different tank conditions because of just how subtle those differences are. I personally like to collect all these different color morphs and grow them side by side just to see how different they are from one another and if they develop different coloration long term. There are several less common variants that pop up from time to time. We have this mauve colored variety, a deep purple color morph with green eyes, and one with a paint splatter pattern. Also long ago, right around like 2015 or so, we had a color variant that was more or less a rainbow, but the tips of the spires had sky blue coloration. I would love to reacquire that variety. We're always looking to add to our collection because pectinia is a coral that we actually enjoy farming long term. All right, that was just a little bit of the background on pectinia. Let's go over some of the care tips. First tip, let's talk about lighting. Lighting is one of those things that reef hobbyists obsess over, and for good reason, no doubt. But when it comes to the care of pectinia, it's not the biggest deal in the world. While pectinia is a photosynthetic coral, I wouldn't say that it's a particularly light-demanding coral. I recommend moderate lighting levels right around 100 par, and that will be more or less sufficient for its photosynthetic needs. Most types of pectinia are adaptable to different lighting intensities, but the first priority should be to avoid overexposure. It does not take very long to do serious damage with light that is too bright, especially for newly introduced pectinia. It's far better to provide dim lighting intensity and either slowly increase the power of that light or adjust the placement of the coral from a lower position in the tank to a higher position as opposed to blasting the coral with too much light initially and then trying to help it recover after it bleaches. Providing the coral with too little light for a week or two even is not a big deal at all. Too much light for a few days on the other hand is going to be a serious problem. The other reason why I would recommend playing it safe with moderate light intensity is that pectinia are pretty consistent with their coloration. There's always going to be some degree of variability and color shift that goes on, but there's not a lot to be gained by increasing light intensity. It's not like some corals that only express peak coloration under intensely bright light. The appearance of pectinia will depend a great deal more on the color temperature and the quality of the light compared to the intensity of that light. Here's where personal preference plays a huge part. Some hobbyists are going to find the coral more appealing in a 10,000 Kelvin light, which is kind of like a, a whitish blue, while others are going to prefer viewing it under pure blue actinic lighting. Health-wise for the coral, it's not going to make very much difference. Staying on the topic of nutrition, 
In addition to photosynthesis, pectinia are surprisingly active feeders, and they can grab and consume a wide variety of foods, ranging from coral-specific sinking pellets to frozen foods such as brine shrimp, mysis, and krill. I say surprising because the shape of these corals doesn't exactly scream, feed me like some of the other corals. They have tentacles, but most varieties of pectinia don't extend them, with the exception of one type, which we will talk about later. Also, the location of the mouths. Half the time, they're located on the vertical spires, making it nearly impossible for food to naturally settle on them. One might wonder, how the heck was it planning on catching food there? In the valleys, I can understand, but the spires, not so much. The likely answer is that, like many corals, pectinia are much more active at night and make a tentacle web to catch anything flowing through its network of spires. Having said that, they are very reactive to food in the water during daylight hours and can be trained to feed at a time that is a little bit more convenient for the hobbyist. What we do first is shut off the water flow. We then entice the coral with a small amount of food to elicit a feeding response. You only need to put a little bit of food around them to get that reaction. Once you start to see the tentacles extend out, you can put a small amount of food on the coral and give it a few minutes to consume it. After that short period of time, you can turn the flow back on and blow away any excess food. We like to feed two to three times a week when we have the time. If you have no desire to target feed, honestly, the coral will probably do just fine with proper lighting from photosynthesis, but we have noticed an improvement in growth and appearance with the occasional target feeding. Let's move on to the topic of water flow. Flow is one of the most important aspects to keeping a healthy reef aquarium as it carries nutrients to and waste away from corals. Pectinia, though, do not require very powerful flow. In fact, flow that is too strong directly at it can be a problem either by putting too much force on its flesh against its skeleton or dislodging the coral, causing it to topple down from the aquascape. We look to provide just enough flow to prevent detritus settling in the valleys of the pectinia's body. If you like to provide stronger flow in your tank, having pumps with variable speed control is a luxury. Variable flow helps in this regard because you can send periodic strong flow to the coral without fear of damaging the colony with too much flow from a single direction. You can also find ways to direct strong flow over the top of the aquascape so that no corals get hit directly. Lastly, when designing my water circulation system, I like to make it as easy as possible to turn off the pumps for target feeding. Some pumps have a handy feeding mode that kicks the pumps back on in case you forget. For the longest time, we did not have great organization when it came to water circulation, so we would have to physically unplug pumps and replug them back in. It was a mess. Think about these things when you're designing your setup from the beginning. As for placement, you will want to find a home for pectinia that doesn't get too much light or too much flow. Most people place them on the aquascape as opposed to on the bottom of the tank. However, I have seen them occasionally on the bottom of a bare bottom tank. If you have a sandy substrate, that could bother them, so I would recommend giving them a little bit of space above the substrate if you have sand in your tank. Keep in mind, that accidents can happen with either flow or a bulldozing fish or invert causing the pectinia to topple off of the aquascape. Make sure that if it does fall down, there isn't a delicate coral underneath that it might kill. Just something to think about. Pectinia as a whole are not a particularly aggressive coral with one big exception. For whatever reason, the space invader color morph wakes up every morning choosing violence. It regularly sends out sweeper tentacles, and it's not uncommon for that variety to have sweepers out at all times, even during the day. Now that I think of it, as a precaution, you might want to give any type of pectinia a little bit of extra room, because they are all capable of sending out sweepers, and though most of them keep them tucked away during the day, it may be a whole lot more aggressive at night when you're not looking. So, if you see neighboring corals looking a little rough mysteriously, 
it may be because your pectinia is stinging them at night. One other minor note on aggression that I'll add is that pectinia can use mesenterial filaments to digest things that are right up against them. Mesenterial filaments are basically like its inner digestive organelles, and I would liken it to using like stomach acid to burn up and eat nearby inverts and algae that are encroaching on the coral itself. Very uncommon activity, but it does happen. Let's talk briefly about water chemistry. Pectinia are a somewhat fast-growing LPS. They grow fast enough that we're able to farm them, which puts their growth rate ahead of a whole bunch of other LPS. As a moderately fast-growing LPS, pectinia are going to need the building blocks of calcification readily available to them in the water column. These bioavailable building blocks being calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Strive to keep your water chemistry close to natural seawater levels as much as possible with an emphasis on consistency over specific values. It is better to keep suboptimal levels of calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium consistent rather than trying to fix low levels overnight with additives. If you're experiencing low levels, say for example, low alkalinity, you can add a supplement to boost it, but first double check your test results. And honestly, test the kit itself to make sure that you're actually experiencing low levels and then make the changes slowly over the course of weeks until you reach a level more in line with natural seawater levels. To maintain consistent levels, the amount of supplementation will depend a lot on the size and growth rate of stony corals in your tank. Pectinia will contribute to that demand, but there's a really good chance that there was going to be faster growing stony corals in your aquarium that will make a much more significant impact on those figures. Calcium and alkalinity aside, Stony corals are sometimes a bit sensitive to declining water quality. In particular, pay attention to elevated nitrate levels. Low nitrate levels around 5 to 10 parts per million are actually welcome for large polyp stony corals, but right around 30 to 40 parts per million of nitrate, you might start running into some issues. If I see a pectinia suddenly start receding, my mind immediately goes to possible nitrate issues. To remedy elevated nitrates, I look to up nutrient removal through aggressive protein skimming, detritus removal, and more frequent water changes. You could try to limit nutrient input by cutting back on feeding, but I tend to favor heavier feeding and dealing with the possible overages and underfeeding because on average, I think that most aquariums are not getting enough food. That's just me though. It's something that you're going to have to experiment with your own system. What type of aquarium would pectinia fit in? Pectinia make a great addition to any mixed reef or LPS dominated aquarium looking for a plating coral with a twist. The spire-like growths really set it apart from all those other plating corals. And if you look hard enough, you can find some very interesting color morphs. All right, that does it for this coral spotlight on pectinia. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more on these corals, or perhaps purchase one of them for your reef tank, I invite you to check us out at tidalgardens.com. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and until next time, happy reefing!